Welcome back to FRC 4607's podcast. This is going to be a reca- recap on the Great Northern Regional, and I'm here today with... Uh, I'm Adam Thielen. I am the build lead on FRC 4607. I am Alexander Urich. I am the lead mentor for 4607. This podcast is brought to us today by... Clear Lake Lions. They help us out a lot with funds for our team and get us to where we want to be for regionals. Thank you, Clear Lake Lions. Uh, so this this region was a little tough for us, week one, and we went into it a little underprepared, but that's just how it goes sometimes. We learned a lot at this regional about our robot, about how our team works, about our new pit, and essentially though, the competition was way different, like way different area than I have ever been to. So queuing was different, pits were different, but it was a great event, hosted everything, great volunteers. Uh, Adam, how do you think uh, the pit went mechanically wise, the robot, everything in there? Uh, mechanically wise, the robot performed amazing. Uh, when we got there, we were having some struggles with our climber. I think we had a motor sending bad feedback to the motor controller and the CAN network. So I, the pit took that motor out and then we got our climb to an under two second climb on the practice field and we kind of underbuilt our climbing hooks a little bit and we twisted four of them throughout the regional then (laughs) uh, the machine shop at the regional uh, Marvin I think it was sponsored by Marvin Windows yeah Mm -hmm. yeah thank you Marvin for machining us out new hooks for our climber we uh, went to them we they helped us uh, beef our climbing hooks up to a quarter inch plate instead of eighth inch and after that, everything went really smooth. Uh, I think we just had a, a couple fa- failure modes to add to FME through it. Really, your the climb itself. Uh, only the only time we didn't climb was when we were playing an anti or a defense climb. Yep. Um, so we weren't gonna. We knew we were gonna get over there in time. But that thing was the the crowd. Our crowd mm-hmm. would sit there and just be waiting, like five seconds, three seconds. All of a sudden, yeah. bang! The thing would go just hammer down and yeah, climb instantly. It was so mm-hmm. fun to watch. Yeah, so fun to watch. So I'm the operator, so and the driver actually runs the climber. So we'll go up there, be ready. But we're almost always waiting for that other team just to get there and be ready to hook on and say they're ready to climb. So there's so many times we're sitting, we're sitting there, and it's just like, all right, three, two, and like they're still not quite ready. Yeah. And then I'm like, okay, Blake, go. And we just somehow get up there just last second almost every time, and that thing just shoots us up right up there. And sometimes we go, and I'm going a little too far and getting worried. <laughs> so, Yurik, overall, how do you think, like, throughout our struggles and everything, our fan section did oh my pretty goodness. great? Um, I told them earlier today in our large group meeting, you could hear the fan section all the way in Fargo. Uh, and... Nothing against the other team, but it's just amazing how every time 4607 shows up, we bring a huge fan base. Um, most of the time, I didn't get to sit with the fans because I'm running around either checking with the different sub teams or talking to people. As some of our other mentors say, I'm out there shaking hands and kissing babies. <laughs> um, but you heard them. Every time we were on the field, I knew we were on the field because I had a running back. I could hear 4607 chanting. I could hear the crowd yelling and screaming. Uh, without a doubt, we've got the, the best fans in FRC. It's just, it's just so much fun to be around them um, all the time. Yeah, for sure. Throughout the competition, like, even before it, did any of you think that, like, there would be even better robots? Because, personally, I thought there would, be, would have been, like, a few more, like, built-up teams. Like, mm-hmm. I thought there would have been more competition, even though we weren't really part of that top tier yet but um man, I, I, I kind of there was we if you to. watched that whole event play out uh number one C didn't stay number one very long they kept getting bumped there was so much good competition up at, at Grand Force yeah. I was well the was seeds awesome. were crazy the seeds very were crazy. unexpected out of 60 teams you gotta remember uh we really thought our robot was gonna do well and we ended up number 32 out of 60 uh there were legitimately were uh, that many teams there that could play the game. And I would highly, if I was a team heading into Duluth right now, if I watch Grand Forks, 
I'd be concerned about how well I'd be able to compete. Um, Especially for it being a week one event. Yep. There's a lot of teams that can climb. There's a lot of teams that can play the autonomous part. And that goal is wide enough, it's big enough, where it doesn't hinder a lot of people. So, no, it was definitely phenomenal. It was, that's the kind of competition I want to be involved in. Mm -hmm. It really is, right? Yeah. A question for Adam here. If we had one more week of build and programming, do you think we would have done exceptionally better? Uh, yes, I, I think if programming build team, we did not give the programmers enough time with the robot. Yeah. I think if programming could have had a, could have had one more week to sit with the mentors, sit, all the students, the mentors sit down and work through all the issues, I think we could have. Or do you think maybe, because that's where the bag and take comes into play, like mm -hmm. six week build season, like last year was different because you had to bag it. Everyone had to bag it at a certain time. This year, if you're a last week uh, competition and you only have one regional, then you kind of can stretch it out a little like more. A week but it all depends on how your team wants to take it. So if we had that extra week, would have we just gone slower throughout the whole time? We'd have time? gone slower. We were not disciplined enough, number one. Number two, we needed to fall flat on our faces. Failure yep. is a great motivator. How many just times like last I said year. that, right? Failure is a great motivator. Uh, our, our programming team, not that there's anything wrong with the programming team, they didn't get enough time, number one. Yep. Number two, they needed to see this thing actually play in real time. It's one thing, uh, playing around our own lunchroom and seeing this stuff work. It's a whole other team, or a whole other deal, uh, going out with five other teams onto a field, and oops, uh, our autonomous wasn't turned on correctly, or oops, yeah. our, our uh, limelight's not working because we had to change stuff up. This is great. This is exactly what we needed. This is what I wanted out of a week one regional. It's one of the reasons why we decided to go week one. Yeah. So. Last year we were doing what four fight four cycles four cycles at in Duluth that yeah. was our that was our that we thought that was good right? yeah we were excited about that yeah Duluth was was again four cycles that was that was remarkable um, we thought we could get it going to Duluth we were gonna fill a rocket last year <laughs> yeah. we didn't come close right do you think that this year before this competition it was very controversial like whether to be a low bot or a tall bot. Do you think it was very smart to be a low bot instead of going tall? Hindsight 2020, I always want to be low bot, right? Mm -hmm. You hate tall build, bots. Build doesn't like low bots because, my goodness, it takes a lot longer to build. If I would have redone things, maybe we look at building a tall bot for week one and then shortening it up, mm -hmm. Yeah. to be honest with you. That was, that was a lot to, to bite off. We're still, people don't realize especially in our team, we're used to building bad robots upwards of 2018, right? Like yeah. 2018, when we went to Duluth, that was not a good that robot. Not. It didn't get, become a good robot until we hit champs. Last year, we finally got to a point where we built a good robot going into Duluth, and it got mm -hmm. better because the programming and the vision side got to get, and you guys got better. Um, this year, <laughs> sadly, we built the best robot to date, and we didn't give programming enough time. We just couldn't squeeze it out. We didn't get program enough time, and this is the most complex robot we've probably ever built, engineered, and electrical side. Yep. We'll look at it this way. Um, how much time did we spend? What was the one major concern we had? What was our number one priority? Shooting. Right? No. Nope. No. Nope. Climbing. 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 Right? How much time did we spend what, on climbing? What was uh, done last? Oh, the climber was done last. We spent how much time did we spend on climbing, though? Honestly. On that climber, how much time did we spend on it? Under a week. How much time did we spend on it versus all the other components? A lot components. of hours. A lot of hours. What worked the best? The climber. The climber. Yeah. Didn't fail yeah. because we spent so much time. We executed on that climber more than anything else. We made sure that climber was ready. If we were to give programming even half the time we had with that climber just to play with the programming. Or autonomous. We could have a good uh, autonomous. Well, that's, yeah, that's, yeah. that's what it is. So that's what we have yep. to work on. Um, I'm going to go back to uh, the event itself. Number one. Um, the folks that put it on, again, Marvel Windows, phenomenal job. Um, Russ Anderson from 5172, who is the chairperson of their RPC. Uh, what an awesome person. What an incredible vision to see. That that, that Lara Center is ridiculously gorgeous. Yeah, right? very Spacious. nice place. Um, I'd love to see that thing push two regionals, but of course, no one's going to come knocking at my door asking me what I think. Um, but now, overall, the hotels, the hotels line 
all around. Our hotel is in the parking lot oh, yeah. of the Alara Center, right? We just walked across, and there we are. Even though I drove every day, um, <laughs> <laughs> still was there. Everybody that I talked to just walked across the street. All the food was right there that we needed to eat. The United yep. was one of the best restaurants I've ever been to. They've got really good wing deals. Um, the concession stands were awesome. The food that was pre-ordered was a ridiculously good. Um, the seating was awesome. The, the sight lines were great. The queue lines were probably the only complaint we'd have, right? But yeah. that's going to happen everywhere it's just, now. Yeah. It's goofy this year. It was a little different. That's where I said the place was different than yep. usual regionals. Yep. Yeah, pits were open. They weren't noisy. Um, the only thing that I have a drawback on, <laughs> this will come into play later, is the noise that comes from the fans and then the announcements that come from the field, you can't hear in the pits. It's hard to hear the announcements. You can hit, hear the pit administration talking yeah, back, yeah. but you can't hear the announcements coming from the field, and that that's a huge detriment to how things uh, work there. But, yeah, it was... Just to be able to listen. Good yep. Yeah. UND is a great host. Uh, they had all their stuff there. They had an FLL, FTC showcase there. Um, yeah, it was a really, really good event. And we've been to a lot. We've been to all the events in Minnesota, North Star, uh, Northern Lights, Lake Superior, 10,000 Lakes. We've been uh, down to St. Louis. We've been to Detroit. And I'm not going to say this is my favorite, but goodness, it is definitely up there. It's It was awesome. Yeah. Adam, after seeing how this event went, what do you want to have done by the next event, Seven Rivers? So as far as the build side of things, with the robot, what I'd like to see is a new intake and a new hopper. Yeah. Number one, our, we had some jamming issues. Uh, and then me and Michael, our engineering lead, we have been talking about making our own gearbox for our climber because right now we have a West Coast Products dog shifting two sim gearbox in there, which we're only running one Neo in it, so we don't need yeah. uh, that big heavy Lighten gearbox. Yeah, yeah and then for sure. We need to cut weight. That's probably one of our biggest issues right now. <laughs> We're at the weight limit for this year is 125 pounds, and the last time we got a robot inspected, we weighed 124.9. <laughs> what were we under? No, I thought we dropped that because we took that, that Neo out. We had the Neo oh, sitting yeah, there for a couple right. that, hours. Okay, uh, you're right. We dropped out at one point at the regional because we got inspected three times. Yeah. Uh, one point, we were at 124.9. Right now, I think we're at, sitting at around 123. 124.4. Still a little close for close. adding things yeah. on. Mm-hmm. Yeah. There's a lot of weight to lose on that robot. The entire superstructure is all built out of eighth inch, uh, one by one square tubing. Should have been built or could have been built out of a 16 gauge or a, a 16th inch. Um, yeah, there's there's weight there still. And there's a lot more that we would like to see done. One thing heading into the regional was again, we're going to do just survive with that climber, right? Like, oh, we'll just make it through. And then later on, we'll add an additional climber that. You know, a twin climber, a, a double hook. No, <laughs> no, no, our climber was good. the thing I was most concerned about going yeah. in there. Yeah, and that was the part of our. As long as it was set up right. Yes, we we had a pit Not set up, spooled right. We so had a yeah, spooled by yeah. Aircast. E man has to take care of that. Right? <laughs> yeah, we had a pit failure. Where we uh, uh spooled a little up got on. caught up in our drum. Yep. Which then we kind of found a fix for it at the regional. Yep. Which that was our first time like really running it. Mm-hmm. So. It's expected to fail. We brought an entire extra component. We brought extra components, like individual pieces, and all we changed out was the hooks. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I mean that that thing's solid. It's we stick with what works. Um, The drivetrain looks good. Uh, No failures on that whatsoever. I'd argue with the intake. The intake. Oh, we got to slow down the the drivetrain. Uh, That could be fast. Way too fast. Twenty feet per second is a little, little much. Um, I'm still going to argue against changing anything out on that intake. What I saw is a lot of teams were having problems with intake issues with jamming. I like our intake. I think the belts on the outside of the intake need to be tightened up a bit so they don't skip. I'll give you that. And then also something needs to be changed on the hopper so the balls, once you intake them, they don't, you know, they don't fly out. So, so that it what mainly I would change, has to yep. do with the hopper. I would change how the intake is on the outside <clears throat> of the hopper right now. I'd put the intake, the arms themselves, somehow engineer it so we can have that inside so you can make that hopper, kind of like 1619s where it kind of went up and flanged out. So yeah. they can still bounce around. Anytime you add anything on, we saw it all year. We put a lid on there, we put anything on top, and those power jammed. cells just jam up right yep. away. Mm-hmm. So. Uh, we want to talk a little bit about the problems we saw with all of the power cells getting chewed up. Yeah. The, the conversation so there. We had to have two 
separate drivers meetings at this regional. The first one was just a basic drivers meeting going over all the problems that we, or not the problems, all the, just the rules of the game, everything that was going on, and then all the human player stuff. And then we got called for a second one and everyone was kind of confused on why there was gonna be two drivers meetings. And then we were all like, oh, all these power cells are just getting eaten up. And so we have some of our own here. So this is probably our worst. Yeah, so this power this cell here for the listeners, it's just a tiny bit chewed up. And this could have been from the week zero event because we yeah, brought we them brought to it. And we've sent how many hundreds of, I mean, yeah. we spent days shooting this thing. And we this would, is our best. This yeah. one we actually kept this, oh, this is a brand new power cell. All right, this is brand new. Uh, it looks clean. There's not a scuff on it. Oop, there's one scuff, so maybe it's not brand new. Uh, here's another one of our red yeah, this ones. So when they start talking, oh, you guys are beating up the, the power cells, we can confidently state that, you know, again, we're wearing them down. They're smooth, yep. right? But we're not ripping them. And I think a lot of that has to do with the clean intake that we have. Yeah. Uh, our hopper doesn't have, I mean, it jams up in the hopper. Holy crap. At week zero, we ran our autonomous. Uh, with the flywheel, flywheel backwards. backwards. And it sucked down. I was sitting there with 2491's mentors, and all of a sudden, bloop, like, where the heck did that thing go to? We're looking, and all of a sudden, he's like, uh, uh, it got, I think it, it got back squished. Stuck, and it was just like a pancake, just everywhere like in there. into yeah. an inch of a ball. Yeah. And we pulled that thing out, and there's nothing wrong with it. It was. Yeah. So our flywheel is actually really smooth and doesn't have sharp edges, so no matter. They're fair lanes, out right? There. Yep. Fair lanes, and then our um, the flywheels, the metal flywheels on the outside are t actually tucked. Yeah, you know, they're, they're smaller small, diameter. Small so, yeah, and we've literally consistently dri driven over the power cells in practice, like at our school. Nothing on the same carpet that we use is yeah. carpet we got after um, our last competition this last fall. Um, so that was the frustrating part when. On my own end, um, again, it's it's other teams build different ways, but when you're physically seeing some of these uh, robots tear them apart, and then the whole crowd, this is like coming from a teacher. If I see a student doing something wrong, and then I just stop and say, oh, class, let's not uh, throw pencils into the ceiling. No, I'm gonna direct it directly at that, those yep. individuals, right? Mm -hmm. I'm gonna warn the whole class, obviously, but then go after those individuals and say, hey, uh, let's not do that again. And I'm not saying that they didn't do that, but that's kind of what I saw coming out of the driver's yeah. meeting. It was and like, then you would get e-stopped eventually. Yeah. I Which don't is know good. how many warnings. Which is good. I'm, I'm glad yep. they got to that point. Um, but yeah, sorry. I didn't mean to come down on, on uh, the people running the event. It was just like, holy crap, there's only so many of these things. And like I said, we run they through a lot. They were destroyed at the event. Yeah. yeah. Like, there's massive pieces. gouges. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so now that we've reached that point, we we're pretty inconsistent throughout the matches. It's just how it goes, though. We were doing a lot of different testing, a lot of pushing code, a lot of testing autonomous, just a lot of new things for us. Yeah, the big thing is, is what I saw at our event, and I always tell the students this, and I definitely told our mentors as they were getting frustrated, said the output that we're seeing from the students here is a product of their training. Um, we graduated almost all of our leadership from last year, and it seemed we got a late start on getting the leads trained up this year. The pit did a phenomenal job getting through what they got through. Um, the programming again, we just didn't have enough time. Um, what we thought was gonna be a strong year for programming, uh, we had a couple issues that Nadine was behind the ball as a sophomore lead programmer. Mm -hmm. She couldn't help what happened. No. Right? So first year, first year, yep. get the the robot late. Um, a new mentor steps on board. We actually thank you so much to Corey Applegate uh, from thirty two forty four. He jumped in the last week and a half, two weeks right before um, our competition, and tried to make some semblance of what yeah. our program was look, looking like. And so. for you programmers, it's insane. I don't even understand, like, what they're typing is it completely different than I could ever, like, run through my brain. But and just the perseverance, yeah. right? Like, it doesn't work, it doesn't work, it doesn't work. It's and just everybody's hounding them. Heck. Yep. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden, holy crap, the turret's flying around, targeting a radon, and just pounding those yeah. balls away. Like, oh yeah, we just had to adjust the PID loop. I'm like, well, 
Yep. Well, there yeah. it is, but thank God. <laughs> Big thanks to Chris Rodefelt and yep. uh, the mentors at 7028, right? 7028 Binary yeah. by Italian. Good yeah. students. You guys are awesome. The students that came over, um, Andy, Travis, the whole group of you. Yeah. Thanks yeah, so we so were much. having some troubles with our limelight at Great Northern, and they came over, helped us out for a bit, yep. taught our yeah. programmers, and me also some things. About the limelight. Adam and got to code a little bit. Yeah, <laughs> you I, coded. Yeah. <laughs> what well, you I, code? I the lime. I did some stuff with the limelight. Oh, you did the little sliders. Yeah, well, I did the sliders and uh, I was talking. I was like, well, because I kind of know what a pipeline is. Like, a, like I kind of have like a general understanding. It's like so. I don't think he does, but he came off the practice field really happy. Like I actually got the program. <laughs> I was like, I got the limelight to work. <laughs> okay, buddy. <laughs> well, I asked and it him, did. I was yeah. like, you click on the pipeline button. There's like. 10 different numbers so I was like well, what pipeline is a field they're like zero like well why we're, were we on to we only have two <laughs> set up yeah it was it was remember we're going back to Thursday and Friday trying to get that limelight to shut off mm -hmm. not having that. Nadine up there remember Nadine doesn't show up until late Thursday so mm -hmm. she doesn't get a shot and then we don't we're not able to get back on the field like we thought we were able to yeah um yeah that was, it was tough it was a lot of adversity this weekend um a lot of things that were off our team that greatly impacted team members. Um, yeah, there's things that we just couldn't control out of our, our hands that kind of crept into uh, that event and made for a very emotional roller coaster, not just for the students, but for the mentors as well and trying to keep things moving forward. So I have not been proud of this team as I was this last competition. So Yeah, so... Uh... We made it third pick, right? 59-13 picks us third pick overall. 59-13 um, Pequot Lakes, a rookie team of ours from 2016. Uh, rookie All-Star that year. Last year, or was it two years ago, they beat us uh, with 2052, of course, uh, 10,000 Lakes, and then ended up going uh, winning the whole regional yeah. um, after they beat us. Um, yeah, so this is a team that we love to compete with, love to compete against. They always bring it uh, very much like our robot, mm -hmm. right? Very similar. Very similar. Um, it just so happened that uh, we were available when they wanted us, and they grabbed us number 13 or number three overall. So that was pretty cool sitting at number 32. Like, <laughs> they grabbed us number three overall. Um, and then we got some news, again, outside of our team. We're not going to discuss it here. That wasn't cool. No, it just threw everything on our team off and yeah that, we were that, at that point pre, it was an emotional struggle yeah. Yeah. so yeah. so that definitely affected on a lot of people especially me yeah. and I walked up to the two the, the drive team and I'm trying to collect my own emotions I'm trying to gauge myself I go up to him talk to him briefly and I'll let you speak in a minute. Well, I knew right away I couldn't talk to him because if I started talking to him, I was out. That was me also. Yep, I was out. So I redirected myself, went back to 5913's coach. I said, I'm not sure where we're at. I think we're going to be good. There's just some things that we can't control that happened. I'm still getting emotional on it because it sucked. Yeah. Yeah. And then we get quarterfinals well we get to quarterfinals and that first match was good like we knew what we needed to do mm -hmm. yep right took care of business as usual classy yep stay classy that was the word, was the word of the weekend <laughs> right? um second one we tried it in the pit we thought we had something cool set up with mm -hmm. one of our yeah, we, uh, second pick 56, overall 56 58 I think we, yep. uh, we tried feeding their autonomous having them autonomously feed balls into our hoppers we it was a great idea we kind of have a six ball uh, six power no. cell autonomous. Yes. Yep. Yeah. Which we're going to need in semifinals. Didn't necessarily need in quarterfinals, but we wanted to try it out. Mm -hmm. Which we ended up, I don't know, was it the we got a third on the tiebreaker? Did we get a penalty for that? No, no. it was on the second. Yeah, so we got, we, got we, get we got a foul for that, which we're a little confused about. But it just happens. It happens. It's uh, week they one. Just, uh, yep. We're all still learning on what the rules are. Yep. And how things are getting to play out, so that's understandable. So we had we sent the Pico Out Lakes, went to the question box, the mentors kind of stayed around to see what the tech foul was all about. Meantime, we were the number uh, four quarterfinals, so, and there's no other tiebreakers, and that's where I screwed up, as I wasn't paying attention to the time, and the timeout, the, the field timeout that happened, 
just week one and all the other stuff going on, I failed to recognize that there was no other tiebreakers. I was yeah. expecting another match to happen. Yeah. So was I. So all of a sudden we get back to the pit. Cures come up and say, hey, you need a cue now. You have 30 seconds. And at that point I said, you need to go. They're trying to put the battery in. I'm like, no, put the battery in on the field. Yeah. Yeah, so E-Man is taking the robot up. You know, Eric Brandt, uh, right behind our Alliance partners, um, queuing. And it just so happened that you know, after I rushed the kids out to get just go without the battery, um, two of the inspectors there near the gates, two great friends of ours, um, we worked them all the time, I'm not going to say who they were, um, stopped Eric just because they want to make sure that, hey, the battery isn't plugged in, the terminals are hanging out. They're doing their job. And, yeah. And they they did this the whole event, everyone yeah. in the queue line, just to make sure the battery was connected correctly. And so we get to the field, like actually to the edge of the field about... We're a minute late. Minute full, late. yep, but our fault. Yep. We should have queued on time. I should have had the team going. I got distracted. Um, yeah. So one thing we've always pride ourselves since uh, 2013, since we started, is we are never a no-show. We will always show with the robot, no matter the condition, if we have a dead battery, Whatever it is, 4607 um, always shows on the field. And for the first time ever, um, we're not on. Mm, yeah. And it was devastating. And that just added to our emotions of the day. It was pretty just down. And I was on the blue side watching, um, talking to a couple other coaches that didn't have teams at the event just came to watch and also I'm looking what the heck what's going on there? I didn't realize at this point that we weren't on the field yeah. so if I go over I'm like oh boy I think I know what happened they, they were out so I go running around and I see both our drive coach Grant and uh, Blake out in the field waving Eric on and he's got his hands up flag like I, I, I can't There's, they're there and I realized we're, we're out we're out for this match um and I just, like, through my mind, the whole, like, this whole time, like, classy, stay classy, stay classy. Yep. So I'm praying that uh, all of, everybody out on the field, I'm praying everybody in the stands, um, not just 46 or somebody, but just understand what's happening here and take this in stride. It literally is just a game at this point, and I, let's not overreact on this. Um, Grant and Blake handled it phenomenally, again, with class. That's all we had to do. I mean, I was out there too, and it's just, it's kind of sad to see you not go out there, but at the same time, you have to understand the rules of you show up late from the mm -hmm. time, you don't, you don't get to go out. And the other alliance that we were playing against actually had the same deal. Yep. They Their number three robot too. was late. Um, yep. And, you know, it was just a discussion on what should have happened. Um, FRC has rules in place. You need to have wheels on the ground at zero. Um, we're fortunate that we got even two of our alliance partners on because yeah, yeah our, watch our, the feedback. Uh, our entire alliance showed up late. Yep, and that's something that for those of watching, those listening, um, keep that in mind as you go compete over the next few weeks. Mm -hmm. The robots on the field at zero. Show, show up on time. Right. Um, and then I went over to talk to Eric. Eric was trying to figure out why he can't go on, and again, Eric is. Just a different person altogether. And I'm like, please, He's God, awesome. have him look at me. I need to see his eyeballs right now. And he was calm. Like he was. Once I saw him, we were good. So, yeah. All right. So, thank you to the volunteers. Everyone, yes. everyone that hosts the event. It was phenomenal. Phenomenal. Food is good. We stayed uh, again right off of the parking lot. Not in the parking lot, but uh, <laughs> the seven dollar vouchers for the uh, seven dollar vouchers saved the yeah. kids' lives that day. Holy that was awesome! Nice. Yeah. And having the chicken buffet or whatever it was right at there that yeah. everyone could go. It was to. nice. You didn't have to leave if you didn't want to. Yeah. What a great event. Fun. Yeah. Yep. So and uh, the weather cooperated. Everything was good. Yeah. So, nice job. Thanks for everyone that volunteered. Thanks for all the parents for coming. Thanks for our sponsors that made this happen. Mm -hmm. Thanks to the coaches, mentors, and students for being involved. Thanks for the school to uh, host us working here. That's, yeah. that's just great. Uh, we're going to end this podcast off here. Thanks for listening to FRC 4607. Have a good day.